child-proof my ass. <gasps> that didn't work very well, did it? So the next um, next check we have to do is the flatness of the head and the flatness of the block over there. Most of the gasket material stayed on the block. There's just a little bit left on here, so plastic scraper for any heavier stuff like that. Razor blade for the finer stuff. There's pretty much nothing there that needs the plastic scraper, so I'm just going to hit it with the razor blade, scrape off as much as I can. Then I'll scotch bright it with a little bit of solvent to clean it right up and then we'll check the flatness of the deck. We'll be careful so we don't cut into the aluminium with the razor blade because you can do it. The blade's too blunt now, it's starting to scratch the surface so get rid of it. Grab a new one. Blades are cheap, heads are expensive. I'll prove my ass. <gasps> that didn't work very well, did it? Oh well, that's okay. It's only a mineral bit of time. I couldn't do much. You get the last of this off with the elbow grease, scotch bright, and a bit of solvent. A lot of elbow grease, maybe. Solvent on it, let it do its work. Oh, there we go. A bit of fresh scotch bright. So you can see the difference already between that and that. We're going to make it all look like that, all better. But it's just going to take time and effort. Okay, so if you come closer. You see I discovered this, it's impact marks and I was thinking, oh shit, have I done that with the head off the car and then I've inspected the piston and it's the matching side and there is some marks in there, I don't know if you can see it, there, 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 which match these, they're about the same size and type, they're not quite as deep as they are in that, but yeah, this piston rolling up here, it's pinching something in there. Uh, the more I investigate and look into this engine, the more I'm glad I pulled it apart. It's probably going to last a little while still, but uh, there's lots of things that are showing signs of wear and failure. Something has been bouncing around in number five, and there's also some faint marks here in number two by the looks of it. Don't know what it was. I haven't checked the piston, but it's not as bad. I'm going to keep cleaning the rest of the head and see what else we find, but yeah, that matching that means that it's happened inside the um, chamber. I haven't dropped it or set it on something. I've been very careful with it the whole time, but I just had to double check. So I've cleaned the head up pretty well. Uh, it's not perfect. Number two also has impact marks on it here. You can see them. And very faintly, what it is there, we have... We also have a faint couple of marks on here. So, once again, that's the matching piston. There. So something has been sucked in through the engine at some point. Well, multiple things have been sucked in through the engine at some point. It would make sense that that's come through the uh, intake somewhere. Don't know what it is. Don't know if it was still in there. I didn't see anything come out when I disassembled it. That doesn't mean it wasn't there. It's not a good thing, I still don't think that's the knock, but maybe it was. I think that knock noise would end up with a few more marks in that. Clean this shit out. Same deal on the, on the block. Scrape off the bulk of the um, shit here. Gasket material that's left over. Trying to get caught on the oil galleries or coolant galleries because they're going to destroy your plastic scraper. Uh, because there's a lot more on this, it's worth using a plastic scraper. You can get quite a lot off. 
Uh, this is a steel block, though, so, or cast iron block, so the chances of damaging it with a razor blade are much, much slimmer. Unless you do something very stupid, uh, you should be right with this. So, doing them exactly the same as we did on the head, except slightly less cautiously because we're not going to cut the cast iron block. And once we do this, we'll do exactly the same with Scotch product. it. And after I do all this, obviously I'm going to then check for flatness. Oh, something I couldn't see before because of the gasket material is these numbers here on the block. They, along with the book, tell you the, the class of spec to look at. So in the book there's a class 1, 2 and a 3 on the bore and it gives you different ranges on each. Um, class 1 is the smallest, class 3 is the biggest diameter. Can you see that? Yeah. Try that one. Yeah, okay. So that tells you which set of dimensions, clearances and specs you should be looking at. Okay, now I've scotch plotted this. It's taken me about an hour. Let's have a look at the finish. Nice and close. It's fairly clean now. Because this is a cast iron block, and because I don't have a straight edge on me that I can use, I have to now um, Oil it, otherwise it'll start to rust. So what I've got is some, uh, I've got, a I've got some run-in oil that I'm going to use, which I'll probably use to run the engine in, unless my research says otherwise. Oh, that's brand new, unopened. I'm not going to use that. Diesel, petrol. Uh, it's never going to be run with this oil, but I've got nothing to use it that I will use it on, so I'll likely use it for this. I'm just going to coat everything in oil so it doesn't rust after I've spent such a long time cleaning it all. That's it I think. I need to measure this and then I probably need to look at the other blocks and see where we're at with those, see what I'm going to use to put back in. Check the flatness of the head. The book says cylinder head distortion limit 0.2 millimeters, which is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, and I have already checked this and it's passed, but I'll show you. We do it. So we check along the bolt hole lines, check along here, down the center line of all the bolt holes, we've got a 0.2mm, but we can't see that, feeler gauge, and we just run that along the ruler and see if it fits in anywhere. And it doesn't. I'll we'll try on this side. So it slip under there, but that's on a gallery, so it's going into the gallery. Check diagonally, across these bolt holes. Check diagonally across the other ones. And then we check between them. Okay, so any distortion less than that is in spec. And the block deck flatness is 0 0.1. So cylinder block surface flatness limit is 0 0.1. And we'll go and do that one now. So go. So the first thing is to wipe off all the oil that we just put on it. And make sure there's no dirt or anything on it. Any dirt, debris or anything that sits in the oil will uh, could impact your measurement. The straight edge is sitting up on something. And I expect this to be within spec two to be honest. I'm not expecting anything unusual here. Again, this is not assembly accuracy. This is how badly damaged or how good or not good is the block. It's not too bad. Um, test isn't perfect. That's not the right tool for the job. 
but it's enough to tell me that the block's not deformed. It will get decked anyway, but it gives me an indication of how good this block is versus those when I check those. So the test will be the same for all of them, therefore I'll have the same relative point of reference. Therefore, whichever one is best will still be the best. That's that, so that's, I, I, I'm happy to say that's in spec, and I'm happy to say the head is as well. Yeah, that's it. That's all the checks that you do, I suppose. I have to check the other ones. And then I have to decide which one I'm, which one I'm going to use to build. And I have to send that to the machine shop. Decide what crank I'm going to use. S probably send that to the machine shop. For polish, at least, I imagine. Also send... I've got to select a head. So I've got two more heads over there I've got to look at. See which one's the best. That one being flat is helpful. The impact marks are not helpful. It'll still get skimmed anyway. It just means that it'll be just a skim. It's flat enough. And that will be it. Pick a block, pick a crack, pick a head. Get all that back and then assemble with better bits and make more horsepower. More horsepower sounds good, doesn't it? I think more horsepower sounds good.